Hey there friends, it's nice to see you again. My name is Raz and welcome to Sound Design Saturday. Today is episode 14 and we'll be doing a couple of synths that sounds like Madian stuff. So this is a kind of a way to get back to you guys because I wasn't able to upload a video last Saturday because I was kind of busy. And because of that, I like to do a two-in-one tutorial today. So we'll be doing this pluck up here and this chord down here. If you can give me uh, maybe a minute of your time. How long is this? 57. Okay, if you could give me a minute of your time, I'd like you to listen to this simple arrangement that I made. And this kind of showcases the synths that we'll be doing. So yeah, here we go. Whoa, my computer was kind of lagging. Uh, there's a couple of stuff going on, like I have four, or yeah, four more layers of synths going on. Bass, noise, and vinyl distortion, but unfortunately my computer couldn't handle all the playback, so I had to render that into audio. And just ignore these guys, we'll be just focusing on these two right here. So I'm going to insert a new MIDI track. I'm just gonna drag it massive there. Let's also solo this channel. You should come up with that kind of sound by default. So first thing you want to do is go to File, select New Sound, turn off the vibrato and the macros of the vibrato as well. All right, and then just point the wavetable position to around three o'clock. So it's a saw wave, and we're mixing a little bit of square to it. Write that to filter 100%. We're in. We'll be using a low pass four and. It should sound like this. Turn the cutoff all the way down. Resonance uh, a tad bit up like that. It doesn't make a sound because the cutoff is all the way down and... Uh, I kind of forgot what I did. Boop. Boop. And, oh yes, macro, macro. Use a macro and modulate filter once cutoff and then set the range to... Not really maxed out, but maybe just around there. Or maybe not. Wait. Shit, I'm really sorry. I forgot what I did. Uh, I don't memorize it. Envelope 1. Envelope 1. It's not macro 1, but envelope 1. Damn it. And set that to around 2 o'clock like that. Set the attack to around 9.30. The K just to the D. And the level be around the just imagine there's another letter that comes before the L and just point that there and this would be the pluck and that would modulate the decay just turn the decay down and this maybe around there point it at three o'clock and adjust this according to your liking around 11 o'clock is a good point get a kind of um, retro Cordish sound. Next is noise. Let's select the tape piss, color up, and the amp to around 930. And that goes to filter 2, which doesn't make any sound because it's down, so turn that up, and the mix in between. So there's equal sound coming out from filter 1 and filter 2. It's making the sound, but it's very, very soft. Let's just make that audible for a bit and we use envelope 2 to modulate the volume of the noise so set the amp down and set the range to around the same as we did earlier 
or 9.30, or maybe 10 o'clock. Attack down. Level down. Point the decay to the A. And let's snap this back to default. Or maybe not. Turn it down a bit. We won't hear it, but if we apply distortion, we will. So select the classic tube for uh, FX1. Drive with up. Drive to around 10 o'clock. Too much, it would sound really bad. Or maybe around there halfway. Still sounds good anyway. And then we'll go to the FX2, select reverb. Whoa, density up, color up, dry wet down to somewhere around there. Just point it to this box right here. EQ, this is optional, but if you'd like to uh, make your sense sound brighter, just nudge the high shelf a bit up. Or if you want it to sound retro-ish, turn it down a bit. Or not, just leave it like that. And uh, what else? Voicing, max to 8. Unison to 8 as well. Turn on the detune switch and set the minimum to 0 0.08. It should sound like that. It sounds fat. Let's turn the drive down a little bit. It's destroying our sound. Okay, and it sounds fat, but if you notice, our sound is in mono, so we'll give that some stereo width by turning the pan position switch on and just slide this uh, slider to around there. Just in the middle of mono and uh, full. I wonder why it still sounds different. Let's turn this down a little bit to do some tiny adjustments. This sounds brighter. Still close, so I'm still cool with that. So we get this sound. So yeah, synth one, the pluck is finished. So it sounds like this. Oops. Yeah, and now let's go on to our retro chord, this one. So I'm going to insert a new MIDI channel, drag a massive in there. And then solo this one, solo the new massive. Again, first thing you want to do, new sound, OSC tab, turn off the vibrato. We'll be using that. Bring this back to default. You should get that sound. Turn the master volume down so we may we, we ensure that we have some headroom going on. And select the additive th three, I think. Yes, additive three, and then set the wavetable position to the P. Filter one, hundred percent. Go to envelope 4, which is what's controlling our master ramp, and double click on the attack to set that to default, as well as the release. Or not, set it to the E. Yeah, I'm really forgetting some things. Uh, please bear with me. Low pass 4 for filter 1. Cut off down all the way, residence down all the way. And then we'll be using uh, macro 1 to modulate the or automate, whatever. The filter one cut off and point that to the end or around two o'clock. I hope you guys could hear that. It's really kind of soft. And then we'll be using envelope five. Enable the sync switch again, ratio one over eight. Sine wave, sine wave, make sure they're both sine waves. And this will modulate the filter cutoff and just nudge it up a teeny weeny bit so you just see a little bit of green dot in there. 
because too much it would sound like that, so just turn it down a little bit. Like that. And make sure you also have... Go to the, 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 the global. And you make sure the external sync is switched on, so it would um, kind of follow with the tempo of your track. That's really a good thing. That's why I like using the LFO instead of like the vibrato for adjusting the pitch. This isn't the pitch anyway, but the, this, I'm just demonstrating. And then we'll go to envelope number one, and that will modulate the pitch of oscillator one right here. Set that to minus four semitones. I'll just exaggerate that a little bit. So the attack goes all the way down, level down, release all the way up, and the decay to... No, wait, just reset the release. Set the decay to around the L. Just point that to the L. And let's set this back to minus four. Okie dokes. And then voicing. Max eight again. Unison eight. Pitch cutoff, turn the switch on and set this to 0 0.02. Oops, we're clipping. And let's give it some stereo width by setting it to the same value as we did for the first one. Okay, we get that sound, and yeah, we're finished. So the optional thing is go to the Attributes tab and fill this kind of form section right here. You know what to do with this. And also rename the macros. I just used one because, you know, I'm kind of in a hurry. Uh, you want to uh, rename this to Filter Cutoff. And then for the pluck, just rename it Pluck. And don't forget to fill this one as well. And yeah, that covers it for today. That's all I have to share. Thank you for watching. If you find this video helpful and informative, hit the thumbs up button and share this with your friends and with everyone else who you think could really benefit from this video. My name is Raz, as always. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. I have more that I'd like to share, so stay tuned for next week's video. If you want to send your requests, there's a link in the description that you can check out. There's also links in there that I put if you want to check out more of my stuff and what I do, my work and what else. And I'm wishing you the best in your music projects. Always take care, be safe. God bless you, and I'll see you again in the next video. Da!